Hello, and welcome to my ninth lesson in the Filmmaking Terms and Analysis unit. This lesson is going to be the final lesson on editing, so you'll want to open up your editing vocabulary for this lesson. As usual, I'd like to start with the question. What types of transitions have you seen between different shots in a movie or in television or in a music video or in a commercial other than a normal cut. What have you observed used by an editor to transition between shots other than a normal abrupt cut? This brings us to our first vocabulary term for this lesson, transitions. Transitions are effects controlling how a shot changes from one to the next. Here you can see some transitions available to an editor using Final Cut Pro. One of the earliest transitions was the fade in, fade out, and it's still very, very popular today, probably the most popular transition. In a fade in or fade out, the shot slowly appears or disappears to or from a blank screen, and that blank screen is usually black, but it could be any solid color, like white, for example. In the first strip of frames, you can see that the shot fades in from white. In the second strip of frames, you can see that the shot fades out to black. In the first animation on the bottom left, you can see the shot fades out to black. And in the second animation on the bottom right, you can see the shot fades out to white. These are fade in or fade out transitions. Our next transition type is called a dissolve. A dissolve is like a fade, but instead of fading to a solid color, you transition into another shot. It's a gradual transition from one shot to another by superimposing the two images. The two separate shots are temporarily superimposed by the editor. Superimposing means to put on top of, so we can see one shot temporarily on top of the other shot. In the top left example, you can see that the dissolve would be a pretty good transition for character remembering something. In the top right example, you can see that the dissolve could represent a change in scene from one scene to a future scene. In the bottom left example, you can see that dissolves are useful for montages. So if you wanted to do an American montage that shows the passing of time, with multiple shots, you could use multiple dissolves. The bottom right example is a compilation of different dissolves used in different movies. Just like the fade, the dissolve is an old transition that's been around for a long time, but is still very popular. Another transition that's been around for a long time is the wipe, but it's less popular today than it was when it was first created. A wipe uses a moving line or shape to change from one shot to another. Wipes are still popular in the Star Wars movies, and it's part of the Star Wars editing process to use wipes transitioning from one scene to another. But like I said, there aren't many modern movies that still use visible wipes that the audience notices. We'll talk a little bit about invisible wipes that you can use, and those are still popular today. In the top left example from A Christmas Story, you can see the wipe follows the children as they move from left to right. It's pretty common for a wipe used by an editor to follow some movement that's in the shot. It adds a certain energy to the transition. You can also see this in the Star Wars example. When C-3PO is lifted up, the wipe goes from the bottom of the screen up with C-3PO. The top right example uses shape wipes to go along with shapes within the image. And the bottom left and bottom right examples show more wipe examples from Star Wars because, like I said, there aren't many modern examples using wipes. They're kind of considered tacky or cheesy, and along with all those other types of transitions in your editing software, you're not going to use them as often as fades or dissolves. The oldest type of transition is the iris in or iris out. In the iris in or iris out transition, a black circle opens to reveal a shot or closes to end a shot, usually opening at the beginning of a scene and closing at the end of a scene or the end of the film. Here you can see some old and newer examples using the iris in or the iris out. Some creative editors have used the iris in or iris out to focus the circle around part of the subject, not always in the center of the frame, as you can see in these examples. Now let's talk about some additional editing techniques that an editor might use. The next term on our list is elliptical editing. When you're writing a sentence and you put dot dot dot, 
That's an ellipsis. So elliptical editing is doing something similar to that dot, dot, dot in your sentence. It's skipping over something. It's implying that there was something in between the first statement and the second statement, the first scene and the next scene. An elliptical edit is going to skip over something. An elliptical edit skips over time so that there's less shown on screen. Elliptical edits are commonly used when a character is traveling from one place to another. In the top left example, you can see that Bruce Wayne is looking at the mountain that he needs to climb up to the top of, and then suddenly he's nearly reached the top of the mountain. We don't have to watch him climb the mountain for hours. That would be a really boring movie. Instead, we show him look up there, and then we transition to Bruce Wayne on the top of the mountain. In the top right example, we see a small elliptical edit as the boy is awoken to go to Jurassic Park, and then suddenly he has his coat and all of his winter gear on, ready, leaving the home. So he's leaving his bedroom, we assume that he's gotten ready for the day already, and we skip all of that boring stuff to just exit the home. Filmmakers want to avoid boring the audience with characters brushing their teeth and eating breakfast and getting their clothes on if those scenes have nothing to do with the story. So skipping ahead is a very wise decision on the part of the filmmakers. It makes the movie have more energy, and it gets us into the action faster. In the bottom left example, we have another example of traveling. We know that we've gone a great distance because it's light outside and then it's dark outside. In the bottom right example, we have another example of traveling, skipping time. A character hitchhikes with a stranger, gets in their car, and then suddenly they're at the location where they were hitchhiking to. We skip over the hitchhiker's interaction with the driver and get right into the next scene because the writers didn't have anything they wanted to say inside of the car. So we just skip to the next location with an elliptical edit. Cross-cutting is when the editor alternates between two different events, going back and forth between the two events. These two events are usually occurring at the same time, these two events are occurring in different locations. This technique of cross-cutting between two events or locations can be used to build tension, and we'll see an example of building suspense in one of these clips. Cross-cutting can also be used to make thematic connections, themes, built up in our minds by seeing two different events juxtaposed. And the cross-cutting can simply draw comparisons between the two events. Cross-cutting is also known as parallel editing. Parallel lines are two lines that run in the same direction, side by side, and you can think of cross-cutting as jumping between those two streams of time or streams of events going from one parallel to the other parallel, back and forth. In the top left example, we have a great example of building suspense. This man has been kidnapped by this woman. He's held hostage in her home. She's broken his leg so that he can't leave. He's in a wheelchair, and he's trying to call the police while she's out getting groceries. He doesn't have a lot of time, and we see her approaching the home. She has arrived, and he's got to get back to bed before she knows that he called the police or tried to. So we're cross-cutting between the woman getting close to the home and the man trying to get back to bed. Back and forth, back and forth, building that tension, building that suspense. In the top middle example, we see that this gangster, this mob leader, is in Catholic Mass. He is practicing the rituals of Christianity, but we are cross-cutting with murder and assassination. He has sent his men to kill, and we're seeing those killings while we're seeing him in church, juxtaposing the, these two things, drawing out the theme of good versus evil. In the top right example, we see another example of building suspense. There's a police officer who has a gun inside of a gift box, and he's approaching uh, this man's home, and he thinks this man is kidnapping women. This man is screaming and yelling and running upstairs to greet the police officer at the door, and we don't know what's going to happen when he opens the door. So this suspense is building as we see these two events play out. In the bottom left example from Inception, this movie relies on cross-cutting. It relies on that parallel editing between dreams and reality, dreams within dreams. Characters are at different levels of dream state 
some of them are asleep in the van while they're fighting in the dream state. We're seeing the character in the dream and we're seeing the character sleep in the van cross-cutting between these two realities. In the bottom middle example, we see a character practicing to fight with a dummy and then really fighting with a real person. That comparison is telling us that he's done all the preparation he needs and that his hard work is paying off. In the bottom right example, we see cross-cutting between two chase scenes. This adds to the excitement of a foot chase by cross-cutting with a car chase. Our next example of an additional editing technique is the jump cut. And I need you to pay special attention to this because many people, even people in Hollywood, use this term incorrectly. A jump cut is something that you've seen a lot of in your life if you've watched a lot of YouTube videos. Jump cutting is when you cut out a section in a continuous shot. If you hadn't made the cut, the shot would have just kept going on continuously. But you took out something in the middle, and so there's a little skip. This is not as big as an elliptical edit to a new location in time. This is a little skip inside of a single shot. I'm using jump cuts all the time to cut out pauses, ums, and uhs, and when I look at my notes. So jump cutting is something that you're seeing right now, and I'll show you an example of it right now. See that? See how it switched from me looking forward to me looking to the side? See that? See how my head just suddenly started looking that way? I cut out the part where I turned my head. And so you saw a jump in time inside of a single shot. That is a jump cut. In other words, you're skipping forward inside of a continuous shot. This is commonly used in vlogs on YouTube to skip the pauses, the ums, the uhs. It helps to speed things up and add to the pace. But usually filmmakers don't want jump cuts inside of their shots. They usually want to cut to a different angle or a different point of view so that it doesn't interrupt and stand out to the audience as a mistake. But sometimes jump cuts can be used creatively. In the top left example, you see the camera stays stationary, static, on a tripod, but the characters bounce around the room with jump cuts. In the top middle example, you can see jump cuts are used to add kind of a nervous tension to the scene. This character is shaving, but he's thinking very depressing thoughts. In the top right example, you can see that jump cuts can be used to turn a static shot into a montage. We see each character hit the baseball in this kind of montage, but it's all shot from the same point of view using jump cuts. In the bottom left example is a commonly used example of jump cutting in Breathless. The French were some of the first to use jump cuts, not as mistakes or accidents, but on purpose. In the bottom middle example, we can see Casey Neistat, a very famous vlogger, using jump cuts to skip ahead in his YouTube video. In the bottom right example, this character is drunk and fighting with the police, and the jump cuts are adding to that kind of disheveled, unorganized, kind of chaotic feeling of the scene. Next up, we have one of my favorites, the graphic match. A graphic match is when an editor uses visual similarities between shots to connect the shots. The visual connection can be a color, a shape, a composition, a texture, or even matching motion within the two shots. Graphic matches can form symbolic connections between the visuals of the two shots. In the top left example, we can see a character from a different time pointing a gun and firing, and suddenly it's daytime. In the top middle example, we can see a graphic match of all of these mechanics posing on a sports car, and then suddenly they're in the mechanic shop working on a car that's not that great. But their bodies are positioned in similar ways, and the car is positioned in a similar way to make a graphic match. The top right example, you can see a graphic match used to match coffee cups with a man's eyes, the circles of the cups matching the circles in his eyes. There's also an example of a woman lying down, and the shape of her face is matched with the curve of the earth. In the bottom left example, we see an example that's used very often to show graphic matching, and this is from Stanley Kubrick's 2001 Space Odyssey. A bone flying through the air, which was just used as a weapon to bash in someone's head, is then transitioned into a space station flying through space. That space station could be equipped with weapons, nuclear weapons, to destroy much more than one person. This connection, the symbolic imagery between this bone that was used to bash in an ape's skull and this space station is basically showing that no matter how much time passes, humans or pre-humans are very violent, and that violence 
carries on as the years go by. In the bottom middle example, we can see that a graphic match between a young boy closing his eyes and an older man closing his eyes is used to connect the two. The young boy is the younger version of the man. In the bottom middle example, we can see two examples where someone's face is connected with their younger self. So the older actor is compared to the younger actor by matching their facial expression and then cutting. In the bottom right, we see a classic example from Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, where a woman has just been murdered in her shower. Her eye is juxtaposed with the drain through a graphic match. The circular shape of her eye is matching with the circular shape of the drain. Her life is going down the drain. She's just been murdered in her shower. That imagery is connecting something in our minds, something significant, something interesting. It's an interesting way for the editing to comment on the story by using a graphic match. There are more examples of graphic matches in this video from Fandora, and I highly recommend you check it out. If not right now, after you finish this video, take a look and it'll show you many different examples of graphic matches. Next up, we have the vocab term hip hop montage. A hip-hop montage is not like an American montage. Instead, a hip-hop montage is all about the visuals and the sounds coming in fast. It's a rapid series of actions in fast motion accompanied by sound effects. These sound effects need to be fast, loud, and noticeable. This is also known as fast cutting. The reason for the term hip-hop montage is because it has a rhythm to it. As you cut from shot to shot, you get a rhythm because each shot has a sound that goes with it and you cut rapidly, rhythmically, creating kind of a hip-hop feel. Edgar Wright famously does this often in films like Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz, and the top right example from Shaun of the Dead, if I turn on the sound, you'll see what I mean by hip-hop rhythm. Here we go. Can you hear the sound of every action rapidly cutting as the shots cut? That is a hip-hop montage. You can use it to go through actions quickly in a fun, rhythmic way that might be exciting for your audience. Next up, we have another one of my favorites, the hidden edit. I mentioned before that we would talk about hidden wipes or invisible wipes. They are an example of hidden edits. You can also have invisible dissolves or invisible fades and invisible cuts. A hidden edit is a completely invisible cut dissolve or wipe disguised by motion blur, darkness, or objects crossing in front of the camera. This is also known as an invisible cut. In the top left example, you can see that the camera moves down into darkness and then out of darkness into a completely different shot. In the top middle example, you can see that this YouTuber is using fast moving objects to wipe the screen, creating invisible wipes. The editor is going in and tracing around objects, removing parts of the shot as the object moves across the screen, essentially creating a line that wipes across the shot, just like a normal wipe. But we can't see that line because it's right on the side of an object, creating an invisible wipe. In the top right example, you can see that Steven Spielberg used this technique in Jaws. He had a person in yellow swim trunks walk across the screen and then used their body shape to wipe each shot. We see the man on the beach, and then suddenly as someone walks across, we're looking out at the ocean. That is on purpose. They're using invisible wipes to transition between shots, creating this kind of interesting flow. In the bottom left example, you can see that whip pans are used to create motion blur. Remember, a whip pan is a pan that moves so quickly that it blurs the image, and that blurry part of the image can be connected with another blurry part at the beginning of a different image. So you whip pan at the end of a shot, and you whip pan at the beginning of a shot, and then those two whips can be connected. That blurry part of the image we're not going to notice when it changes, so it creates an invisible cut in that moment when the camera is whipping. The bottom middle example is Alfred Hitchcock's classic example from Rope. Alfred Hitchcock was creating a movie that seemed to be shot all in one shot, even though film reels could not go for hours on end, more like 15 minutes of film at a time. So he had to use darkness to conceal the camera, change the film, and then 
reveal the shot out of the darkness. This is using darkness to create an invisible transition. In the bottom right example, you can see that darkness is used to conceal the transition as well. Here we see an example of a whip pan being used to make an invisible edit, but not just to switch between shots, but to create the illusion that someone is throwing a knife into someone else. Of course, you would never risk your actors by throwing a real knife, but if you throw a toy knife at somebody, it's just going to bounce off. So how do you create the illusion that someone is getting stabbed with a knife that's being thrown at them and do it safely? The safe way to do it is to have one person on one side of the room pretend or really throw a fake or real knife with no one else on the other side of the room. The camera whips with the throw and then where does the camera go? Well, it's just looking at an empty side of the room. But that whip part, remember, that's going to be the end of that first shot. The second shot, the first actor is gone. The actor getting hit with the knife already has a fake knife handle glued to their chest or glued to their stomach or glued to their head, and they're just going to react. They just need to throw their body back and act like they got hit with something. So the camera's going to whip across the room and land on them reacting to a fake knife being thrown at them. You can even see where this transition happens if you slow it down to the individual frames. You can see Uma Thurman make the action of throwing the knife, and you can see we're barely moving inch by inch as the camera pans, but then suddenly she's gone. She disappeared, and we're seeing the blurry motion toward the second actor, who is simply reacting to a prop that's been glued to her chest. She's pretending to be hit by the knife. That spot where the camera blurs from the motion of the camera is used to make an invisible cut so the audience doesn't even notice that it's not one shot, it's actually two shots. You can use invisible edits hidden inside of whip pans to do other fun effects, like two characters waving at each other who are actually the same person. You would have two shots, one where the person is waving on the left and you whip the camera, then they move to the right, and you whip the camera again and land on them, and it appears that they're waving at themselves. In the top right example, you can see that these film students are experimenting with the Kill Bill knife throw, where they're using a whip pan, throwing a butter knife, and the other character is catching the knife. In the bottom example, you see the character is getting ready to sprint off, and they do start running, but then a whip is used to speed up to them being far, far away. And so they whipped when the character started running, and they whipped again when the character was already very far away from the camera. Using that whip to connect the two and that motion blur, it emphasizes the speed of movement, making it appear that this character is super fast. You can check out this article yourself from Jason Boone at premiumbeat.com to see how these three effects were done. So now I want to give you my editing effects challenge. I want you to demonstrate all of the editing techniques that we've talked about so far, other than the invisible hidden edits. You're going to try the fade in, fade out, and you're going to label it on the footage, fade in, fade out. You're going to create a dissolve, and you're going to label it on the footage, dissolve. You're going to create a wipe that moves with a character in the shot, and you're going to label it wipe. You're going to create an iris in, iris out, and you're going to label it on the shot. You'll create an example of an elliptical edit where a character leaves and then comes back and we assume something happened while they were gone, skipping over that time, and you'll label it on the shots. You're going to create an example of cross-cutting. It's commonly used when characters are having a conversation on the phone from two different locations. You're going to use it to connect two shots of characters typing, as though they're typing to each other back and forth between the two characters at different computers. You're going to create an example of jump-cutting, Jump cutting, remember, is simply taking out parts of a continuous shot. Make sure you take out enough parts that it's really twitchy and noticeable that you're adding lots of jump cuts, and label it jump cuts. And you're going to create an example of a graphic match between two similar shaped objects, circular objects. And finally, I want you to create a hip-hop montage of a character running into a room, grabbing a paper, stapling it, putting it in a binder, and slamming the binder shut. All of those actions cut very quickly will make a rhythmic hip-hop montage. Don't forget to label it hip-hop montage. So if you're one of my students, I've already provided you with all of the footage, and you can get onto Wii Video, and you can open up the shared project editing techniques. 
If you go to the link, you can see an example created by one of my students. Now that we've talked about the exercise, I just want to end with a final question. What meaning can be created by using a dissolve instead of a cut? Look at these examples. In the top left example, a morph dissolve is used to transition from a young version to an old version of a character. In the top right example, a dissolve is used to transition from a character remembering to the thing they're remembering. In the bottom left example, a dissolve is used to transition from a map to the characters traveling. So it could be a transition in time from their plans to their journey. In the bottom right example, dissolves are used to create a kind of hallucinatory feeling. This man is feeling strange, probably drunk, lying down, listening to the sounds of war, and we're seeing the sounds of war and hearing kind of hypnotic, psychedelic music. So dissolves between shots can create a dreamlike, weird, psychedelic, uh, strange sensation to give the audience an understanding of his state of mind, that he's not mentally well. That's it for different types of editing transitions and additional techniques. That's the final lesson on editing. I'll see you next lesson to start talking about sound design. Thanks for watching.